Dick and Hinchliffe, composer for The Lost Daughter, Maggie Gyllenhaal's new film, which is coming out in December, and then we'll hit Netflix at the end of the year as well. I think Maggie's a first-time filmmaker. You know, what were your early conversations with her like, and how early in the project did you get involved? Um, I mean, she, although it's her first film as a director, she's incredibly experienced as a, you know, in terms of filmmaking, she's been on sets all her life and is uh, an amazing actress and her family as well, you know, her parents and directors and script writers. So it it was really funny because I, I I didn't know what to expect, but it didn't feel like this was her first film. She felt like, um, very experienced, but at the same time, she had a, a freshness about her, you know, because it was actually her first film that was you know, really exciting to work with because she, you know, she'd say to me, well, how do we do this? And and I'd explain that it's really quite simple um, in terms of, you know, we, we, talk, we talked about the film. Um, she sent me a car. Um, I started sending her, sending her music and she'd send me music from other, other sources and we'd just get a discussion going. But a lot of it was really about her wanting me to understand her film and, and the characters and how... Um, and how the feeling of it, that the music should engage in it and be another character itself rather than just, she didn't want some kind of passive sort of wallpaper type music. She wanted something that really engaged. Um, so that was really exciting. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. I, I agree. Watching the film, it definitely does not feel like the work of a first time filmmaker either, obviously. So that's interesting. Not, not surprising to me to hear that working with her was like not that experience as well. The music is uh, really remarkable, and I, it totally took me off guard. Honestly, total, it, it kind of subverted all my expectations for what I thought the film was going to be like. And I guess, can you? And hearing you say not wallpaper, it definitely it's kind of like you do a lot of different things. I guess, can you talk about like being able to maybe subvert what the expectations for this kind of film would be? I, it definitely surprised me in, in a very positive way. Yeah, well, one of the first things Maggie said was she she had this idea concept that she didn't know if it worked that the music would be like a found record, you know, like a, a vinyl album from from the past, a vintage one from the 50s or 60s, that um, that if you put it on to play and it would somehow magically work with the film and be its film score, you know, which is which is a great idea. And, and it was, and it really got me going in terms of writing the, thematically and, and writing in a way that um, I was writing music that could exist outside of the film, you know, like a record which was um, a really interesting approach. And it, it kind of, um, the whole process sort of developed from there. And, and so I think that's why when we say it was kind of surprising, is it's a combination of that approach then combined with that she wanted a kind of vintage analog sound. Um, and there's a few, few songs in the film that influenced me a lot in terms of getting that sound. Um, and so we went because she almost she's almost shot it a little bit like a, an old French or Italian film, um, but the themes of the film are not the kind of films that have been dealt with in the fifties and sixties. So that and I think that's what makes it such an interesting kind of friction at work there. And so the music, you know, I, I kind of was influenced by old old film scores very much. Yeah, what were what were some of the ones you were like looking at or listening to? Well, I guess I, I you know. I'd, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Georges Delarue um, and, uh, and Truffaut films, you know, Fellini's films. There, there was nothing really specific. It was more, you know, things like Miles Davis, uh, Lift to the Scaffold. Um, we talked about that a little bit. And although my score is nothing like that, it, there's something about it that um, the kind of simplicity and sparseness of it, I think, that, that kind of got me going to begin with. And, and it's got a, and it, obviously it's from a, it's got a slightly jazzy feel as well. Yeah, you hear that right away. Kind of it, the movie opens and we see Olivia Coleman's character just like the music just explodes basically into the, the scene and it's like really sets the stage for for a great. And that's and that's Lita's theme, I guess you would say maybe. Like, did you like were you did you consciously try to like give everyone a different theme? I guess and, you know you have obviously like uh, uh, Dakota Johnson's character and everything. Like, how were you, what were your thoughts and how you differed those themes? Like Lita's theme is the very jazzy one like you were saying i think there and yeah 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 no i right from the get-go we, we both agreed that it'd be great to have a theme for later because her character is so strong and the whole film revolves around her and um and, and again maggie wanted something that that would sort of um you know really kind of play against her at times as well 
And so the, the, the idea was that we'd, we, I, I wrote this theme and, and then at different times in the film, it's kind of distressed and fragmented and distorted and really kind of quite screwed up by the end, um, which is sort of, I guess, in tandem with the way that her character changes and the, the shifts in emotion and psychological states that she goes through. Um, but the, the music is very much around the Olivia Coleman character. And I think there's a different theme for her when she's younger, when she's looking after her kids. And, um, and that one is more, I wrote something really quite childlike on a piano. It's like a, almost, um, almost like a nursery rhyme. Um, but at the same time, it's offset by these kind of swirling hammered organs and distorted strings and, you know, things really shifting and, uh, the, the, the kind of contrasting worlds of, of motherhood and, and childish, this, the childish state. And I think that that was another area of themes that we developed and used. Yeah, that's interesting. I was going to, I was wondering if you did, because for, for those watching who haven't seen it yet, obviously Olivia Coleman plays the character as an, an older, a little older, and then Jesse Buckley plays her younger. And um, yeah, it is interesting to hear that you had different themes for that. I think that's really really cool and and really key was there like was there a challenging or anything that you were like oh this is what like what was the most difficult part of this process for you or that's something that maybe you were like surprised that you had to like overcome or got stuck on or anything like that um I think it was writing writing the ideas to begin with happened very quickly you know like really fast and the hard thing was um you know making a film school in, in terms of um developing those themes and and the subtlety of the film is, and, and the, the performances are so rich and engaging that the music had to be really on it to, to feel like it could be part of that and, you know, not to, not to sort of move, to take your mind away from them, but at the same time to sort of enrich the, the world that they're inhabiting and, and their characters. Um, so it, it, was, it was tough in terms of um, sort of, just engaging the subtlety of the performances and, and the atmosphere as well and the tone. That, that was the hardest thing. Yeah, it, it's interesting too. Like you mentioned, like I think it's all, it feels like this could be a lot of different genres, right? Like it is, there is like a thriller aspect to it and like all these different things and trying to to balance that out is, is really, I think the music does such a great job of that because I think you're like, you know, it totally keeps you off balance, I guess. And I think that's really, really impressive stuff that you were able to do there. Uh, um, Vic and Hinchliff, thank you so much. Uh, Lost Daughter is out later this year and is on Netflix at the end of the year as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.